Well, thank you very much indeed. I'm really very grateful for the invitation to talk to you uh, this evening because it gives me an opportunity to tell you about something that's been very close to my heart for a long time. And it's this subject, the uh, unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics. So I wish, first of all, I'd come up with that title. I think it's the most fantastic title. Uh, and I think the more you think about it, the more you read into it. Uh, but I'm afraid I, I didn't. I borrowed this title, or stole it, from one of my heroes. And I'm going to tell you about this hero of mine. Uh, and then I'm going to tell you what the title means and why it means uh, something to me personally. Um, so my hero is Eugene Wigner, who was uh, a mathematician and a physicist who uh, had a long life, uh, died 14, 13 years ago, 14 years ago. Uh, this is Wigner when he was uh, a younger fellow. And this is Wigner slightly later on. And this is Wigner immortalized on a Hungarian stamp, because Wigner was originally Hungarian. Um, and he's very famous, uh, both as a physicist and as a mathematician. And he got the Nobel Prize in 1963 for his work in both areas. So sort of this combination of mathematics and physics. Uh, so he contributed many, many things to mathematics and physics. And actually, the area of research that's my favorite one at the moment was initiated by Wigner in the 1950s. So I spend most of my days following in his footsteps. Um, but what I want to tell you about tonight is not so much his research, his mathematics, or his physics. I want to tell you about some of his thoughts about the relationship between mathematics and physics. Um, because he wrote an exceptionally beautiful essay in 1960 called The Unreasonable Effectiveness of Mathematics in the Natural Sciences. Um, and these are his thoughts about this relationship between maths, physics, chemistry, essentially mathematics, and the natural sciences. And it's an absolutely beautiful essay. And it means a lot to me personally, because when I was thinking about what to do at university, when I was a sixth former, um, one of my teachers, who was very influential in my life, gave me this essay to read. And I read it, and then I decided that I'd become a mathematician or a physicist, and that's exactly what's happened to me. So this, this essay really did set me off on the path uh, that I've taken ever since. Um, it's exceptionally beautiful, as I say. It, it's quite an e easy essay at one level. It contains no mathematics at all, not a single equation, and not a single picture. It just contains words, thoughts. Um, but at another level, it's quite tricky. Uh, Wigner wasn't writing for an audience of 16, 17, 18-year-olds. He was writing for an audience that was slightly more experienced, had met slightly more concepts. So I found it a bit tricky when I was a sixth former. Um, but some of the things that are in there really kept with me all the way through until now. I I've thought about them very often. Um, and so what I want to do in this lecture is take you through Wigner's essay. So very few of the ideas I'm going to describe tonight are mine. Um, they're, they're Wigner's. And actually, Wigner himself says in the essay he's taken them from many other mathematicians and physicists he's met. But he distilled them in this essay. And I'm going to try and distill them for you tonight. Um, if you want to read the essay yourselves, you can either go to a university library and find it uh, here, or you'll find it much more convenient to go to Google and type in uh, unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics and Wigner, and you'll come up with the essay uh, on several websites. And if you uh, look at it, it's less than 10 pages. So uh, it should take you half an hour on a good day and definitely less than an hour to read. And if there's one thing I can do tonight, it's to encourage you to read it, because it's exceptionally beautiful. So I'm going to tell you about what's in this essay. But first, let me tell you a little more about uh, Wigner uh, as, a, as a scientist. Um, so Wigner grew up in Budapest uh, in Hungary. Um, and he had a rather remarkable upbringing. Because he went to a school, small school in Budapest. And he happened to be at this school at exactly the same time as two other people who went on to make very profound and deep contributions to mathematics. So it's a remarkable coincidence these three very, very great scientists, mathematical scientists, were all at this school at the same time. And they were all friends, and they stayed friends throughout their lives. Uh, so one of the 
school friends of Wigner was uh, John von Neumann, who um, became one of the most dominant figures in mathematics of the 20th century. He uh, invented many new areas of mathematics. One of them is called game theory, and it's used to uh, describe economics, it's used to describe uh, evolutionary biology, it has many, many applications, and he invented that area of mathematics. He was also a very distinguished applied mathematician. So he, um, he's one of the people who, along with Alan Turing, really took the computer to where we, we know it is today. He invented many of the concepts of the modern computer and was responsible for building one of the first computers and actually was responsible for some of the first electronic weather forecasting uh, calculations. Um, he applied mathematics to many other things that we might find slightly more distasteful now. Um, he was the key applied mathematician in the Manhattan Project to build the atomic bomb. Um, and such was his involvement in the atomic bomb uh, and such was his knowledge of it that when he died on his deathbed, um, he was surrounded by armed guards, lest in his death throes he revealed state secrets. Um, so that's von Neumann. Uh, not a way to go, I suppose. Um, the other person who, uh, who uh, Wigner was at school with was Edward Teller, who's pictured next to Wigner there. This is Wigner, and that's Edward Teller. And Teller um, became the, 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 a very distinguished scientist, but he's best known uh, for being the, the mind behind the hydrogen bomb. So you see, Wigner had a rather unusual upbringing. He was responsible. He grew up with two people who were very much involved with the, the arms race in the 20th century. Um, so these are his school friends. Wigner grew up in Budapest. He eventually moved to the United States, where he worked in Princeton for many years, along with von Neumann. They, they stayed together throughout their lives, pretty much. Um, and um, he made many great contributions to mathematics and science, as I've said. Um, but I'm going to tell you about his essay. Um, now, you might not guess it from this photograph, because he looks a rather glum fellow. Um, but the essay starts with a joke. Um, now, I should say, um, it's not a joke that really makes you laugh out loud. So it's not a funny, ha-ha joke. It's more a sort of poignant story, sort of wry story. It maybe raises a small smile. Um, and actually, I'm useless at telling jokes anyway. So it really won't make anybody laugh, but I'm going to tell you what the joke is. Uh, because it illustrates the whole uh, idea that Wigner wanted to get across in the essay.